Welcome to Breaking the Chains. I am Bakita Muhammad here with Yazid Muhammad. And today we are talking relationships. Relationships, romantic, intimate relationships. Uh, the two of us have um, both been diving into this conversation. Um, it's becoming more of a topic amongst the men now. And I wanted to get some masculine male energy involved in this conversation. And Yazid was the first person that I thought of because you are, I think, the only person that I know from here who's actually married to a Ghanaian woman. So. Interesting. Please, uh, I've had you on my channel before, but if you would reintroduce yourself to those who may have not um, seen the previous video with you on it and um, tell us about your some of your businesses and the things that you got going on and then we will dive into this topic. Okay, well, thank you very much, Sister Bakita, for inviting me to be a part of your program. Uh, my name is Yazid Muhammad. Uh, I repatriated to Ghana in 2009, along with my mother, Brenda Karima Muhammad, and we came to with the uh, intention of being a part of a community development that is at uh, Yefa Ojimiti Hankra, and also to establish some businesses, and well, which we did starting in 2010, we registered a business and uh, started a computer training school, Block Factory, and then eventually evolved into a uh, the business that we are now running now called uh, Born Again African, Born Again African Ghana Soul Food, uh, as well as we acquired some land, we acquired some land and then started the business. And uh, my mother, she passed on in um, 2018, God rest her soul. And yeah. she's not an ancestor and she's also in support of what we're doing. And I've been uh, kind of tasked with carrying on the legacy that we kind of initiated together, but, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the best I can to continue the legacy and carry on her, on in her good name. And in 2019, I should say 2016, she was a part of the group with the Ministry of the Future and others that received their citizenship. And I, I eventually received my citizenship in 2019 with the 126. And from there, I began to form uh, what is called what I a business that I call real repatriation consultations, where I assist African diasporans in trying to settle themselves in Ghana uh, from a, a number of a number of services that we offer that we can explain and we can get into at a different we can get into it as we are discussing it. Uh, yes, I, I married my wife who is happens to be her name is Jeanette, uh, formerly Agbanyo. But now Jeanette Muhammad, she's from the Volta region, Mafi Kumasi, and we met in 2011 and married in 2013. And we've, um, this is our ninth year of marriage, and we have two beautiful children, uh, Rose, who's three years of age, and Selikin, who will be two years of age in April. Both of them are born in April. And, wow. Um, we have some businesses here that we have established, and a restaurant called uh, uh, Born Again Africa Ghana Soul Food. We're the only soul food restaurant in the whole West Africa, I believe. And we sell a little bit of our culture and introduce a little bit of our culture, not sell it, but we introduce a little bit of our uh, soul food to the Ghanaian palate, as well as we offer it to uh, catering services and those things to other diasporans that are living in Ghana that may want to share some of uh, the, our cultural foods and give Ghana is an opportunity to try to something a little different. Yeah, that's pretty freaking cool. So you mentioned that you have a, a, a repatriation consult, consultation business. Um, yeah. Can you tell me more about that? And I know uh, before uh, you met, you also mentioned that um, relationships part part of your consultation is relationships can we talk about talk more about that also yes uh, of course uh well for the real repatriation consultation what essentially how it evolved was 
as since I've been living here, I've been sharing my story on my Facebook page under the Yazid Muhammad. And, um, you know, I kind of kept an open diary since about 2010 or so. And through that, you know, I shared my day-to-day -day experiences and it kind of attracted people to following my story. And mm -hmm. over the time, you know, people would contact me directly through my, you know, through Messenger or those kind of things. And, you know, I would have dialogue with them and talk to them about my experiences further. And then, you know, maybe they want to know how to start and establish a business or even how to get a visa, how to get a residency, you know, all the, all the way to how to meet a wife, you know, it, 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 it runs the gamut. So the, the type yeah. of questions and those things uh, yeah. come come through that and then you know once I got the citizenship I received the citizenship uh, from the president Nana and mm -hmm. uh, in 2019 I felt it was kind of like a graduation and uh, even a stamp of approval that you know now that I'm, I'm now a Ghanaian citizen I feel that I can also help others to make their transition into Ghana and I'm not just a person that just moved here and lives in my house and I'm collecting a retirement check I'm all, I, I'm a, I'm a, I moved here when I was 35 years old. I'm 47 now. I'll be 47 this year, and I have to actively be working in my business. And I I kind of see uh, other African American men in the United States that uh, they Africa or Ghana specifically is really the best kept secret from them or from us that we don't really yeah. realize the opportunities that are here. You know, if only that we are really to, to, to take the risk and achieve our dreams. Mm -hmm. So as far as, you know, an aspect that uh, real repatriation consultation that uh, evolved recently was um, that um, the, since 2019 and the year of return with uh, Ghana and the initiative that they had, the, the, the uh, marketing that they initiated to, to attract the African diaspora to Ghana, uh, there's been a great uptick in uh, these type of relationships, African diaspora relationships. And, and uh, I noticed a, 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 a various number of uh, dating groups start to establish on Facebook. And I began to join them and, and, and be, be begin to market Born Again Africa Ghana Soul Food as a place for a meet and greet. Though yeah. we are located about, about an hour and a half outside of uh, Accra, it's kind of sometimes a challenge for people to, to get out here. But I, I, through that, through that, I began to follow the groups and see the dialogue going on among the, you know, among the participants. I a lot of African-American women specifically seem to be not, it's, I'm just gonna talk about African-American women for the moment, but a lot of them seem to uh, get taken advantage of by some of the brothers uh, in Ghana. Yeah. You know, it's hard to uh, vet somebody that you met online, especially right. across the Atlantic, especially across the Atlantic Ocean. You know, you find it difficult as a person can tell you they are a chief and they tell you that they are, you know, all kind of uh, stories. You know, oh, yeah. that may not that may not necessarily be factual. So through that, I begin to um, you know I, as as I stated, and you all you all as well. I I I, I married my wife uh, in 2013, and we have a traditional marriage. And I've attended some traditional <laughs> other traditional marriages here, and I got an opportunity to see how uh, families marry families and not just individuals, yeah. you know, as, as we are, we have experienced in the United States. So through that process of the uh, traditional marriage, that is you have the introduction, the knocking, the engagement, then the uh, marriage ceremony itself. And through that process, you, mm -hmm. you have an opportunity, to, families have an opportunity to investigate and ask questions of the potential spouse's mate or the potential mm -hmm. spouse. You know, in in within, uh, I would say with the in this good spirit of trying to find out this person is uh, healthy, if they right. come from a family that doesn't have uh, sicknesses 
or mm -hmm. you know, or a promiscuity or uh, mm -hmm. womanizing or inability to give birth. You know, and these yeah. are some of the things that I learned that uh, as uh, traditionally that Ghanaians question each other about whether even uh, whether or not the person is married previously or currently. And if this person, if the person you're coming to marry is also going to be a uh, a second or third wife, you know. Right. So yeah. let me uh, let me ask you this. Um, so you married your wife in 2013, correct? Correct. Okay. So, um, you know, I'm married to a Ghanaian also, and. Um, a lot of times I see, you know, we see a lot of women talking about the dating in Ghana, dating men in Ghana, as you mentioned, a lot of women get taken advantage of. And um, in some cases, a lot of men are a lot of the men in Ghana are being taken advantage of also for other reasons. But um, yeah. when you were. How did you find dating? when it came to like your wife, like, I think okay. um, the little bit that I've seen so far, I don't see many of the men really talking about it, but I've seen a small bit and it seems like the dating process is quite different than what we're used to. Um, and I think from what I've seen, the brothers are struggling with the dating part of it. So. Can you explain and tell me how did you find the dating process and what did that look like? Okay, well, like I said, I moved here in 2009, single mm -hmm. male. And uh, I guess I was dating for a few years before I met my wife. And uh, I spent a lot of time at that, in, in 2009, I was spending time in Accra and uh, Tema. And mm -hmm. I had a, I befriended a, a good friend and now brother named uh, Kojo Apia. And we would move together. And uh, one thing I would say about Ghanaian women is that they, they like an introduction uh, as far as, um, you know, because of the way we speak as Americans, it sometimes uh, it can be misconstrued that we are, uh, are Nigerians or some other person or somebody else. So, and, mm -hmm. um, and it's not always common to meet an African-American man. So, you know, I found that I had to often explain myself that, um, no, I'm, I'm really from the United States or something like that. So, <clears throat> you know, what, 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 what helped me was I had a, a Kojo uh, or a Kojo George, I, 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 we, we also call him. And he would kind of act as somebody that was a go between, you know, if I saw a woman mm -hmm. I was interested in, he, you know, I, I may approach the woman myself and she may be uh, a little standoffish because of the way I'm speaking. And then uh, before maybe my friend would come in and say, oh, uh, this is Brayazid. He's from the United States. He's a good brother. And yeah. with, just with that alone, the woman's whole demeanor will change and uh, she will feel more comfortable to speak with me uh, or and what I've and what I've noticed with, with across the board with a lot of brothers that is kind of how it works out that okay. you know uh, pe people need to be even vetted at that level to make some people feel comfortable uh, right. uh, you know and um, dating so uh, the dating scene is and I'm 10 years removed, 12, 10 years removed from the dating scene. So the uh, 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 dating in the United States, as if I can recall, kind of looks like uh, I'm calling a sister. I'm calling you. Hey, how are you? I'll meet you on the, on the street or wherever, or the club. Right. How are you? Yeah, yeah, let's go out and have dinner, da, 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 da. And I'm going to take you out and um, wine and dine you and... Uh, I'm going to pay for everything and um, it, it, where it goes at the end of the night is between, it's, it's up to us and it may right. take some time. Right. Right. And Ghana, and Ghana here is, is very similar to that, you know, uh, mm -hmm. only that I think 
some Ghanaian, some women, they may African uh, continental women, as you call them, they will like to uh, also move with their friends. If they are not comfortable with you, the man, then maybe they would like to come out with their girlfriends and, you know, to make them also feel comfortable. And I think that's also understandable. And then you will also be responsible, the man, for paying for them. And yeah, uh, I was just about I've, to ask that. What I've learned is these are these are some cultural uh, differences. Uh, yeah. As you spoke of earlier, that I also have a YouTube channel where we have been kind of discussing these um, cultural uh, uh, challenges in African diaspora relationships. And one, you know, one one uh, thing that we that came out in the interview that I had with a with a sister was that um, a Ghanaian sister was that. Um, uh, we did, you know, because of African, because of our experience with African American women, uh, and that is, African American women are typically very independent, also uh, strong-willed, uh, and uh, very independent. I think is the best way to, to frame it. And when you know, I've been taken out by women in the United States once upon a time ago. You know, women would even took pride in in paying for the meal for me or taking me out or something like that. And I yeah. don't think it that's not as common here, you know, um, and especially uh -huh. especially as you and me as an African-American, uh, we are seen to have uh, have it all already. So, you know, the, some of those pressures and those things are also there in the dating scene when you are, I think, when you are a, a, a dating a, 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 an indigenous woman. Okay, so if, you know, there's a young man, um, there's, and I've seen a lot of young men's, um, well, I won't say a lot, but I've seen more young African-American men starting to come to the continent, um, uh, Ghana especially, and um, the, if these are single young men, what would you suggest, or how would you suggest they go about um, if if they're in if they're interested in dating Ghanaian women? How would you um, suggest that they go about that? Well, you know, first thing I think you need to, if you have a Ghanaian male friend, that will be a very helpful because there are some. Uh, uh, bonds between men that can help, uh, bonds between two males that can help uh, with the diet, help to guide us through those type of, in the early stages of relationship with a, 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 an indigenous woman. You know, there's some nuances that we don't know. Uh, and it goes vice versa, you know, right. as well as a, if a, a, a Ghanaian brother was to meet an African American woman. I can also help him. And I've talked to other Ghanaian men, you know, and they're kind of apprehensive on how to move, uh, move with you, you know, move yeah. with an African-American woman. You know, you'd be surprised at, you know, uh, at, at some of the uh, apprehension that they may have with you that they don't have with a Ghanaian woman, you know? So maybe uh, they may be timid in some places where they should be strong. And then, you know, and it's just something that, you know, you just unfamiliarity. Yeah, can you give me um, like an example of the, um, of that hesitation? Like what would cause that hesitation or what's causing that hesitation? Okay, well, let's say the brother may say, think, a Ghanaian brother may think, this is my only opportunity to get such a woman. So I don't want to mess this up, right? So in that, uh, there are some, how would I say it? Uh, there are some uh, behavior or characteristics that African-American women portray when they are attracted to the man. You know, right. you, may, you may do certain things that will give green light, <laughs> right. touch me, touch me, green, uh, red light, don't touch me. Right. You know? There are some things there that, uh, you know, it's hard to say. So if, if, if the woman, maybe you may, may better know if you're with a man, a man is courting you, he likes you, and you can, you know, 
if you don't like him, you are going to be a little standoffish. You know? Right. If, if you do are attracted to him and you want to see him, you will, uh, or want to go to the next stage with him, you will not, you will go on a second date. Right. You, you understand? Uh, if uh, one instance here was I uh, met a brother uh, and, and I vetted him for an African-American sister here. You know, she mm -hmm. came to my area. She came to my area for a tour. The man was here. Um, I invited him in to also meet the group that was here. And, you know, there was a little connection there between two people. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is my friend uh, X. And he's a good brother. You know, you can, you know, y'all should hang out. And I think they hung out that evening. And later on in the tour, she invited him to meet him, excuse me, meet her at a hotel at a different location along their tour. And I think he went, but it, uh, um, uh, how should I say this? Is, this this is a uh, this is not a PG program. No, it's not <laughs> uh, a PG program. You okay. go so for he, it. <laughs> so he wasn't able to uh, 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 close the deal with her, you know. <laughs> or, <laughs> you know, but I, and and I was like, oh well, you know, you know, when he was t explaining it to me, and he was like, yeah, you know, they went for a walk on the beach, and they went here and way there, and I was like. I'm waiting to hear about when did you make your move? You know, and right. he was kind of like, I didn't know if I should make my move. And then I think if he was with a Ghanaian woman, he'd have made his move very, yeah. you know, he would have acted differently. But I think because of his apprehension about uh, uh, the how, how the woman may respond, you know, and I, I, I you know, we, let's say in the, in the U.S., I remember being in, in university at Hampton University and uh, they did a, a, a whole, every, every, every semester, I think they, they had a whole no means no uh, talk, oh, yeah. you know, you oh, know about God. how to interface with young women. And, you know, those things kind of stick with us where, uh, you know, some of those things also portray out in our movies. And, you know, I think, you know, Ghanaians, they also watch those things too. Uh, you know, the whole world is watching them. And, yeah. you know, they become kind of, you know, where maybe you should be aggressive, you're passive. And yeah. um, from my experience with African-American women, they don't like passive men. They like aggressive men. So, you know, that you have to also know when to be, when to uh, uh, press on the gas and when to let up. So, you know, I, I, these are some of the, very nuances a month, you know, uh, and it goes, like I said, it goes vice versa, you know, yeah. for, uh, I, I quite remember early on dating Ghanaian women, you know, I'm being Mr. Nice Guy to them and trying to uh, 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 talk to them, you know, yeah. I don't know how, <laughs> you know, and, and, and a Ghanaian brother would tell me, no, that is, that was the button, you were supposed to push the button at that place, right. you know, you know, you're supposed to close the deal there. And I didn't, you know, I, it took a while, but once I got comfortable with the system, yeah. you know, it, 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 I, 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 you know, it goes to, it, I'm, I'm, I'm okay now. <laughs> oh, so one of the things that, um, in, in talking with people about this whole uh, African-American men dating uh, Ghanaian women, um, I've heard complaints uh, about, like maybe Ghanaian, I don't, I guess it's the whole thing of, you know, you're taking her out to, you're taking her out and she's bringing her friends and you got to pay for her and all of her friends. And um, the guy is not really understanding this as part of the culture. Um, also, it seems to me that a lot of the men that I've come across who have tried it, um, I think they seem to believe that dating a Ghanaian woman is going to be cheaper than dating a, like an African-American woman. Um, I think they uh, don't think that they're going to be required to, um, to do as much, I guess, uh, financially. Um, I don't think they, uh, I think there's a misnomer that 
these women are going to be easy. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that, um, do you think that's a misjudgment or is it? It's definitely a misjudgment. You know, um, let's be honest. Uh, you, you've lived in, in, a, as in Ghana as well, and there's a uh, spectrum of wealth, you know, of yes. levels of, of Ghanaians that live here. So, you know, uh, you can meet Ghanaian wealth that you have never met before, you know, and that woman, if you want to date in a, I would say in a cry girl, uh -huh. you, should be, you should be prepared to be dating a, a woman from the U.S. That is right. typically the, they are uh, trying to be like you, or not, not you specifically, but the yeah. trendy thing that's going on in the U.S. That is essentially what they are trying to do. You know, uh, yeah. Uh, and you know, uh, early on in my dating, uh, I met. I was fortunate enough to meet uh, and and befriend and bond with older Ghanaian women. And I uh -huh. often they, they would often ask me why at thirty five I was unmarried with no children. And then I would you know we, we would then start dialoguing. And I was like, well, yeah, I'm interested in marrying and getting married. How do? I? And then I would ask them, how do you find a good wife? And they would instantly say, uh, character. You know, you have to mm -hmm. judge one's character. You have to judge one's character. And you know, one thing I, I quite remember uh, uh, older sister, older sister here telling me was that, that uh, the women in the university they are spoiled. That means they are not the not the more quality women to marry. In oh wow. Life. Yes, that you should rather look for the young lady from the village or the woman from the village. And they have more of the fundamentals, more they have more of the fundamentals of being a wife. And I found that, you know, I didn't marry a, a, a university student or a college grad. I married a sister from, you know, the neighborhood here. And mm -hmm. I, for me, that's my, that, that was what I chose, you know. Uh, a woman that wanted to be to build a family in the sense more than they wanted to build a uh, career. Okay. So speaking was, of the marrying a, a village woman versus a city woman, I um I think that there's a there's something that we should clear up. Um, I've seen several conversations where um where it seems as though the men from here are thinking that they'll come to Ghana, get them um, a village woman, and it's going to be all good, right? Mm -hmm. um, many times I've seen where there's this idea that they can come to Ghana and get several women. They'll, these women will buy into the polygamy lifestyle. Um, and, uh, I wanted to kind of get your, your input on, on that. I'm sure you've seen those conversations where it's like, cause we don't, that's not our culture for the most part, for the most part, yeah. it's not our culture. And, you know, there's usually a conversation that starts about polygyny, polygamy and how it goes. And these, the men tend to think that they'll come to Africa, they'll get them three or four or five women, and it's just going to be all good from there. Um, so what do you think about that? Well, you know, for polygamy, it's, uh, it's embedded in the culture in Ghana, probably across Africa. My wife, her father had three wives. And most, of, most people I meet, they are from that type of dynamic. It's you know very common to meet a man or a woman that is a product of that type of marriage or marriages. Uh, for African right. American, for husband, our, yeah, my I'm husband's sorry. family was that. My mm -hmm. um my father-in-law had four wives, so mm -hmm. the majority yeah. of people we meet will have that kind of background. Yes, and granted, that is a generational thing. So you know, mm -hmm. his uh, 
his generation, I don't think, behaves in that same way. You know, I, right. I don't know the age. I don't know the age of your husband, but I'm just maybe he's in his forty down that way. Yeah, he's he's um he's approaching forty. Right. So you know, his generation, I don't think you'll find many of the men to have taken that route. Is uh, right. I'm imagining your husband is a ma is uh ed college educated, yada yada yada. So some of those, you know, some of those men don't take that route. And, you know, uh, because of religion and some of those things have also altered some of those behaviors. But right. even I met, I meet Christian pastors and traditionalists, and this is in Islam, it's quite common to marry more than one woman. And, you know, your question is about how African-Americans kind of uh, are trying to uh, move in that way and right. you know uh let me state that there are three different type of marriages in ghana mm -hmm. you have that the state recognizes that is the traditional marriage which allows for polygamy that is a muslim marriage that allows for polygamy and the christian marriage that is a monogamous uh marriage and mm -hmm. the court recognizes those three and with those same polygamy uh, parameters, if you will, and, right. and you know, many of us we coming in, we thinking that you know it's, you know, first of all, I think well, polygamy has a bad rap today. You know, people think yeah. of polygamy, think of think people think of polygamy and think of of, of sex and not love. You know, right. people think of polygamy and think of uh, uh, sex and not nation building. You know, and and and, and to you're not framing it, I think, in the right light. Even right. Uh, you know, for uh, many of us coming from the diaspora, United States, you know, it's a sex, 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 sex all day is there. You know, all day yeah. is you know pumping in the atmosphere. So you know, it, and if you're thinking you're coming, let me tell you something. Uh, around every corner in Ghana, there's a more beautiful person walking. Right. You, you, you 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 will by all means can meet a beautiful woman today and right tomorrow you you could you are by all means see a more beautiful woman walk a more by. beautiful and I, woman and i think that goes probably the same with the men absolutely you know, uh, as many beautiful women here there are equally as many beautiful men so absolutely. you know uh if uh you 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 can't fill that cup I was saying you can't you can't satisfy that urge. You know, every time you're going to be meeting somebody new, uh, if that's what you want to do, you know, uh, for my personal self, my for myself, I want I, I always saw myself as a, having a family, mm -hmm. but I didn't see I didn't see the opportunity when I was in the United States to have the family or to start mm -hmm. a family, to get married and have a family. When the opportunity presented itself here. You know, it was all about timing and the spirit. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, do I foresee myself marrying somebody else? I don't, at this stage in my life, see marrying another woman. But right. I don't know what the next 10 years can, in, you know, can hold, you know, but in my mind, that's not something I, I'm willing to pursue. Let me say right. that. Mm -hmm. but, uh, other brothers come in and, you know, one of the great things about being a, a, a diasporan or African-American in Ghana is that you're an African-American in Ghana. And yeah. uh, that, is an, that's, that isn't an attraction in itself. And if you're yeah. an attractive person and intelligent and you can speak well and you carry yourself well, you look fine and you have a little bit of money with you in your pocket and you're doing well, that's those are that's all icing on the cake, you know. And you can have your opportunity to meet various amount of women in every day if you want it, you know. And, and I would imagine for a woman, uh, they can also meet as many men as any man can, you know. Yeah. It's just uh, this is 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 all of what the experience maybe that you want, you know. And I think also it boils down to respect for yourself, uh, you know. Uh, 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 some years ago, I met a brother here, uh, what we would consider in the U.S. kind of nerdy, you know, looking. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's not—he's not the uh, typical 
uh, type of uh, black men that African American men women would go for. Right? Yeah. And, and um, when he came to Ghana, uh, he was surprised at the amount of beautiful women that were here and also that were approachable, you know. And it took, I think it took time for him to adjust himself to even those kind of things. Like, wow, you know, she really was, I said hi and she said hi, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that sort of, that sort of shocking thing, you know. And then, you yeah. know, I, I, I often say, you know, uh, Africa is probably the, the the healing place for African American men. You know, a lot of us have very low self esteem. Is uh, constantly under attack from so many different angles in the U.S. You know, to come to a place like this and you know the, to to get that instant respect. You know, uh, yeah. you know, being a man, even to be treated like a man that is the man of the mm -hmm. house, it goes it goes mm -hmm. a long way, and that is something that is cultural here, you know, and I, I, yeah. I often talk about the roles and uh, I, I would say probably across the indigenous world and, you know, uh, the roles are more defined in, for, in terms of, listen, you're the man, you're the male, that means you are to be the man. You're as the man, your responsibility is this, 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 this. And, you know, uh, as a woman, your responsibility is this, 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 this. And, you know, you, you know that coming up that you are that is the responsibility that you want to have to become to have that label as a man to be a father to be a husband you know whether you marry more than one or not you know that those are some of the uh, the rites of passages if if you will to becoming a man in in, in ghana and africa you know uh, yeah. as i stated earlier at 35 years old I wasn't even thinking of marriage, you know, I, that wasn't on my mind. I was like, I was mm -hmm. like a kid in the candy store when I got to Ghana. I was like, wow, this is great. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you, know, it's, you know, and it's, a, a, it's something that you kind of have to adjust to. Adjust to, maybe, yeah. Maybe you're not a used to attention, you know, that type of attention from uh, a beautiful women, you know, yeah. in the U.S., you know, in the U.S., most of the beautiful women are Instagram models, you know, and you have to, yeah. you need to jump, you need to jump this high <laughs> to right. get that opportunity <laughs> with them, you know, and, 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 and the, you know, what suffers is the average black woman in America that is, you know, not an Instagram model are the ones that are, I would say that are, 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 are taking the loss there because the men are looking for fantasies. Yes. And not, not, not for reality and substance, you know, and, and I think in, in Ghana, in Ghana here, you may be able to get the two together, you know. You yeah, and I think that um, from what I've seen, uh, you know, I've been up to date and seen for 10 years myself. So, mm. um, well, going on 11 years now myself. Um, but I think in some cases, there's a there's like a fetishizing of our continental brothers and sisters. I think that yeah. people have this image of what that's going to look like on both sides. Is it a, the African-American women feel like Af the Ghanaian men are going to be a certain way and the African-American men are thinking that Ghanaian women are going to be a certain way. And I think everybody's off. Um, I think they're completely uh, like missing the mark because we don't understand. Like you, ha if you haven't lived in Ghana, and if you haven't seen the interactions between men and women and experienced what that looks like, then I think you have. Uh, I think there's a, a a a clear misunderstanding of what these uh what the relationship dynamics are, and um from the African American male uh side. It seems that um, from the conversations that I've seen, it, it seems that they don't quite understand that that providing and protection component is really big in Ghana. Really, like, big, really big. You, you, are, you, you are coming you to do everything. To <laughs> you're coming like, to do everything. Yes, yeah. you're coming to do it all. And mm -hmm. 
from the conversation that I've seen, I've only seen like a couple of conversations where they're talking about dating in Ghana, and it seems like they're disappointed in the fact that they get there and they're really expected to do this, that, and the third. Like you, there's a whole like plethora of things that men are um, expected to do and women are expected to do. And yeah. I think the African-American women tend to go way to the left and it, it, it just seems there's not any balance on either side with trying to adjust to things. And then the relationships end up not being able to move forward because nobody knows what the hell they are doing or oh, yeah. what it is they've gotten themselves into. So then someone like you who has a service that uh, you're, you're providing people with understanding of uh, what it looks like, what you could, uh, what you should expect, and you know all of those things. I think that is a very, very valuable. Um, and I appreciate you. I wish when I got married that I had someone to um, help to guide this thing along. <laughs> like even maybe help my husband understand me better and help me to understand him better. Um, because it has been a very challenging um, thing. I mean, we've made it, but yes, it's, yes. I think because I'm from the South, that also has mm -hmm. helped. Because um, being a Southern woman, you know, we have quiet as kept. We still have some very traditional, very conservative beliefs here. Yeah. And um, my family is from the deep south, so it's kind of like, you know, but mm -hmm. I think that helps, that has helped me in, in, in my uh, marriage. But, you know, I wonder with, with us coming from this Western society and with all of the convoluted uh, trauma, all of the crazy stuff that we've done dealt with as far as our family dynamics and relationship dynamics being um just completely obliterated almost um do you think that um these relationships and as much as it seems like there's more women tending to pursue these relationships than men but do you think that these are that is something that we could um, be more successful at. I mean, you've been successful at it. I've been successful at it. But how do you think going forward, this is going to look for both sides? Well, you know, it's. Uh, I think we all have to. You and myself, we have to applaud ourselves and applaud, and as well as our husband and wives, we have to applaud each other for being pioneering. And these are very pioneering relationships. I don't know that in a, there's been a time in history where uh, Africans have been repatriating at this type of rate to the continent. And also uh, based on romantic relationships, you know, uh, as, as you spoke well about the traumas that we have suffered in the diaspora, uh, we have been completely shut off from the traumas and experience of our indigenous brothers and sisters here. So and they too likewise have been kind of cut off from us, have been not kind of but cut off from us, given misinformation about us, we to given misinformation about them. And then now you know we are coming to in when you include in language barrier, culture, and all these other things, it is it almost seems like an impossible it uh, feels uh, like it has. You know, and you know, it's, it's not it's not for everybody, you know, and right. you have to really, really be able to humble yourself. And I'm sure you can relate to that, that you know, you have to humble yourself and 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 also be able to be palatable so that you can, yeah. you know, uh make the make the relationship work. And I think in terms of marriage, that is fundamentally it. You know, if you're not able to 
you know, uh, grow with, yeah. your, with your marriage, then, you know, your, your marriage will be doomed. Uh, one yeah. thing that I think that what keeps my marriage growing is that I'm continually learning. Also, my wife yeah. is also continually learning, you know, be it language or culture, these things uh, uh, kind of keep the spice in the marriage, yeah. you know, even uh, uh, this, my, my, my wife, she protects me from a lot of uh, cultural things that um, mm -hmm. maybe I may, uh, uh, <laughs> I may not respond well to, you know, right. <laughs> you know, right. you know, and that, 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 that is her, her being wise, you know, and yeah. knowing how to navigate me through the relationship of being here, you know, uh, for instance, I think you are based in, in Atlanta now, and is that, mm -hmm. not, is that right? And your yeah, husband is with you. Uh-huh. And your husband We're is back and forth. Right. And it's a, I would say it's a different dynamic, you know, uh, I've been living in Ghana 12 years. Jane has only met my mother and my brother and my sister. She has never met mm -hmm. my, my, my extended family, you know, right. and uh, uh, that's a different uh, dynamic, you know, where mm -hmm. I'm here with her and uh, family is, uh, is, 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 you know, families are very much close knit here. You know, if somebody dies or somebody's getting, you know, everybody have a role to play. You know, in those in that in in the United States, we've kind of gotten away from a lot of that. Unless you are, you know, like you expressed, even I think, even in the deep deep south, people have kind of moved away. Some people have moved away from those conservative traditional values of family, right. you know, and being in support, insurance. I'll, I'll tell you, health insurance and life insurance really kind of uh, put a real damper on a lot of the family support, you know, because yeah. now I, I got life insurance. I don't need your help, you know. Yeah. When once, once upon a time ago, if you died, the family buried you. You know, it's yep. not so much that, it's not, it's not like that anymore, you know. So that, that is the advent of, of Western civilization. Not that, it, not that in life insurance is a bad thing, but, you know, these are some of the things, uh, the, the glue that held our communities together, held our families together, that, you know, at some point we were going to meet each other. Now, nowadays, you know, we, we, in the U.S., we cross each other at family reunions every 10 years, you know, and, you know, you don't see each other as often as you should. And, you know, yeah. even, right, even right now in my own family, I, I don't remember the last time they had a, a, we had a family, organized family reunion that you know, yeah. all participated in. And in Ghana, I think it's very different. You know, uh, family is very tied. I was, I'm curious to know how your husband handles those responsibilities uh, living outside of the country. You know, it's easy to turn your phone off, but when you're here, you just can't turn your phone off. No. <laughs> you just can't your um, phone here. He has... I think he's done a phenomenal job. Um, this, you know, integrating into this society is not easy. It's not easy. Um, I think it takes a certain kind of person to be able to not only integrate into this society, but be married to a person um, that's from here. You're from another country. Your, your person is from here and then, you know, trying to get acclimated to, okay, I have my own cultural ways of doing things. This person has their cultural ways of doing things and how do we m mesh them together somehow? And mm -hmm. um, I think he did really well. Um, it was difficult. It was very difficult, um, especially considering before we got married, I, I had a child um, uh, and she was, I think she was 10 when we got married. Um, so that was a whole nother aspect of, um, of him coming into the, this relationship because I had been a single mother for like nine years. 
And mm-hmm. so, you know, there's a kind of a, a a thing that comes along with being a uh, African American single mother, uh, doing it all by yourself. Um, mm-hmm. I also yeah. had the we also had the other dynamic of my daughter's father and his fam his family. Um, we have a very good co-parenting um, relationship. A uh, very good uh, like everything is pretty. We didn't. There's not a lot of drama on on my end of the uh, of the um the table. Thankfully, so I think that made it easier. I I, I don't mm. know how it would have gone if there would have been a whole lot of drama going on, but mm. um it was it was I think it made things easier for him to um come into this uh this society hold on one second why you see i'm talking (laughs) close my door i'm sorry um it's all good it's okay (laughs) please dog i I, I just did it myself (laughs) stop get out yeah (laughs) so um you know, I, th- I I really think it takes a, a certain kind of person um, to be able to navigate these relationships. You do have to be able, everybody has to be willing to bend. Um, I was telling a friend of mine that oftentimes with the African-American women, I feel like they, they try to, they want to give up everything about them and you can't. There's no possible way for you to give up everything that you are. You can't. Um, So you have to bend a little. You bend a little, he bend a little. Um, And that is the thing that has made things easier for me and my husband. It's taken a a lot of conversation, a lot of communication on, on, like really having to break things down because there is still a language barrier. Even though my husband speaks English, yeah. he before he spoke English, he spoke like three or four other languages before learning English. He, and he, he thinks in those other languages. Right. So mm-hmm. I I had to, it was early on, like within like maybe a year or two, um no, it was like in into the two to three year part. I started to realize, like, I'm, I'm like, okay, because it really feels like this man is not hearing me. He's not hearing what I'm saying. So I asked him one day. We were in, we were living in Ghana, um, and we had had a argument, and his brother was there. His brother has also lived in the U.S. for a really long time, um, and I asked him. I said, how do you all think, like, when I say something to you, what are you hearing? How do you, how do you process what I'm saying? And, and this is done in, in, in microseconds. So you, your first language is Sisala. Your second language is like God, or the third language is tree, uh, whatever the case may be, which language do you process in and then translate it into English and come back, right? Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. he's like, uh, so my husband comes out and we're all sitting there talking about it. And it still took some time for them to even understand what I was trying to get at. Mm -hmm. The question. So the question Mm -hmm. was, I'm speaking English to you. When you hear me say it, what language are you hearing? So basically, he translates it from English to Sisala, then from Sisala back into English like that. Instantly. But many times, <laughs> <laughs> but many yeah. times there's words in English that, don't that aren't there. Mm-hmm. So he's trying to respond to what I'm saying and it's I'm like what the fuck you talking about yeah (laughs) so (laughs) and that's literally initially how it was coming out like what what the fuck 
are you talking about? Like that's not yeah. even that's not even what's going on here. But mm-hmm. at, over time, and both of us having patience with each other, we found mm-hmm. ourselves like, okay, so like it was several different points where we had to really just stop and come up with a better way to make sure that we're clear with each other. It's Mm -hmm. been a lot of work. It's been a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And I don't, Mm -hmm. I don't speak tree or gun or fancy or anything yet. Mm -hmm. Um, Because Mm -hmm. we've, it's, it's, our house is, is mostly Americans. He's like the only Ghanaian in the house with us. And it's more comfortable for him to speak, just speak English to us. So I haven't, I haven't taken, I haven't really taken the time to learn a language. So it's hard for me to even still Mm -hmm. to get him to understand where I'm coming from. So we have to, we end up like both of us end up breaking things down into like elementary type conversation so that we can make sure that we're clear. And Mm -hmm. I don't think many people Either it, it it it's it's a lot of putting ego aside too. I have a big ego. He's mm-hmm. a he's an African man, so he got a huge ego. And mm-hmm. there come there came a point where we both had to kind of really put that ego aside and face the fact that okay, I love this person. I ain't I don't wanna. I don't want the relationship to die because we can't communicate with each other. So mm-hmm. how do we get to a place where we can understand each other? And we just found ourselves at a place where it was like, okay, so sometimes if I don't think that you really under, if your answer to what I just said does not really compute, I'm going to ask you in a different way. Mm-hmm. and so yeah. it's it's taking a lot of time but I would say as a man um, and knowing how just knowing how men are my husband has been so patient he's been so because I have a fiery mouth um, which is something that um, most Ghanaian men are not used to not used to that at all um, so that took some adjusting on his part, which is again why I say I'm really, um, I think he's done an amazing job, um, adjusting to this relationship because even when I think about when we first got married and like, I was like, oh my God, I'm so glad this ain't a man that, that, that beats women because, oh God. <laughs> Some of the things I've said, (laughs) some of the ways I've reacted has have been now that I'm older, you know, I was I was 31 when we we got married. I'm 41 now. Now that I'm much more mature, I'm like, oh God. Mm -hmm. There's a better way to handle it. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that should have handled a lot of those things. (laughs) I should have handled much differently. And Mm -hmm. and now, you know, with us both maturing, um, he has we have both um, grown so much. Um, and, you know, a lot of times I have uh, women ask me about uh, being married to a Ghanaian. And I'm like, a man is a man, for one. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to learn. Y'all both need to learn some cultural things about each other. Um, mm-hmm. And you just got to be willing to do some, some bending. You got to be flexible. You got to be ready to um, understand. And uh, that's just been my experience. And I think that some of the women that I've met who are married to Ghanaian women, men, they don't seem to understand that they have to exercise patience. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Exercising patience. The, that term was one of the the terms that I hated the most about when I first moved to Ghana. Exercise, you got to oh, exercise, yeah. patience. Ex- exercise, exercise patience. patience. Exercise patience. I <laughs> hate it, Karen. I'm like, no! Now, I'm like, exercise patience. 
now I'm always telling people to exercise patience because um, it's not easy. It's it's not easy, but it's doable. You know, it's doable. It feels impossible sometimes, but if every I think if everybody is willing, yeah. it's possible. You're 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 proof that it's possible. I'm proof that it's possible. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. You know, so what you, advice? Go ahead. I wanted to ask you. I wanted to ask you. Uh, uh, there's a dynamic that uh, not much talked about, or mm -hmm. maybe it is just not in the circles that I'm around. But you know, as we, as we kind of talked about earlier, African American women seem to be leading in the African diaspora relationship as far as uh, travel is concerned and coming to Ghana, meeting somebody potentially marrying them. Um, yeah. a, lot of the, a lot of the dynamics has been older woman, younger man. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you find that to be common? I find it to be very, very, very common. Um, and in many instances, I think because um, as you know, culturally in Ghana, men, the older, the men, um, like if I'm 30 and a man is 30, he's probably already married, right? Mm -hmm. Or if I'm 40 and a man is 40, he's probably been married for a few years by now at We're this sure. at this point. Um, you know, the, the men tend to be, um, the age range of availability is usually the younger men. Um, my husband is five years younger than me, um, which is not as big as I've seen. Oh, I've seen bigger. some where the women have been like 10, 15, 20 years older than these men. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I think that, you know, if we're just being honest, you have to really consider um, what you're dealing with. If this man is 25 years old and you 45, 50 years old, you have right. to know that mm -hmm. you might let's, wanna let's, think about it again. Yes, let's be because, realistic about the situation. Yes, because many mm -hmm. of those women, your past child, even if they're not past childbearing age, they don't wanna have any kids anymore. Mm -hmm. their, their children are probably grown. So you have a 25, 30 year old, even 35 year old man who hasn't had children yet. Uh, and he's telling you that he doesn't want to have children. That's, um, that's more than likely a lie. Um, it's a red flag. Definitely a it's red, a red flag. flag. It's definitely mm -hmm. a red flag. Also, I don't think that the women take into context that um, How can I say this? <laughs> These people play the long game, right? Long game, oh. <laughs> patience. Exercise patience. Exercise and patience. <laughs> <laughs> long, long game. Yes. So if we're honest, if we're honest, um, I'm like, if everybody would just approach the the, the situation in 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 honesty, because let's be honest, if you 45, 50 years old and you marrying a 25 year old man, you ain't marrying him because he's some big provider. He he's he's doing all of this protecting and and, and giving you all of the things that you want. He, that's not why you're marrying this young man. You marrying this young man because. Sex, li likely for sex and also your ability to uh, control the situation to be the dominant person in the marriage. Those are the two things yes. that I always say. You you bought into this whole Mandingo warrior thing, mm -hmm. um, which bothers me because I feel like uh, the women are fetishizing the men. Mm -hmm. um, and, and or, like you said, you're older and you can control the situation a little more. Um, you mm -hmm. probably have more money, um, you probably, you know what I'm saying? Like, if we're yeah, honest, 
yeah. if we're honest. And that's the truth. I mean, that's the truth. It's the truth. And the thing mm. about it is, if we also have to be honest about the fact that in Ghana, people, um, men aren't a 25 year old man in Ghana and a 25 year old man in America is not the same. No, like no. nine times out of 10, our guys tend to start having sex at earlier ages when a Ghanaian man may not start having sex till he's like 20, 25 years old. So mm. there's a, a sexual experience thing or inexperience thing going on here. Um, mm. And women can control that too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yes. I think that, it's- lack, um, That lack there of, of, of ex, ex, sexual experience in to different things. I think is what you're kind of alluding to. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. I just, we have to just be honest with the fact that there's so many times women are ignoring these red flags, but then I wonder from a man's point of view, what red flag should a man be looking for? An African-American man trying to date a, a, a Ghanaian woman because I've heard of them getting scammed too. So what, oh, yeah. what, what would a man uh, be looking for or how would he know? You know, and, and it, like I, I kind of stated it earlier, that is uh, character, you know, as it was expressed to me by a Ghanaian elder that, you know, one must study a person's character and how do you do that? So and then that, 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 take, that occurs over time. And, you know, uh, I think initially when my wife and I got together, uh, there, there, there were some questions, among, not with me, but with others around me. Did she really uh, love you? Or did she love the idea of being with an American, you know? Uh -huh. and, uh, and those things, uh, you know, and it's probably both, you know, but it, uh, it, uh, we in the West kind of have been, in the world has been kind of um, miseducated on this thing we call love, <clears throat> excuse me, and why we get married <clears throat> based on love. And those things are not uh, necessarily sustainable. You know, you may right. meet somebody and love, uh, love grows and sometimes it dies. So, you know, you need right. to be with somebody you need to be with somebody that you can um, be friends with and develop yeah. a, you know, and, and it, it should go, it will be love at the base, but it also evolves, love will be evolving in a different way, you know, so that you have a love and respect for yes. your mate so that you, you know, I don't want to abandon my, I don't want to abandon my mate, you know, to that degree. And those yeah. things take time. How do you, discern that from uh, a, a woman that you meet here, you know, those things take time, you know, a, a pillow talk really was something that helped me to acclimate into Ghana, you know, as I would uh, be dating women and, you know, uh, we became intimate and uh, the pillow talk, in my opinion, is unguarded dialogue, you uh -huh. know, uh, where, Maybe I can ask questions about cultural things that I, you know, that was burning in me that I wanted to know about. I, I, at the, off the top of my head, I can't think of something, but you know, I'll be able to say, "Oh, you know, what do you think about this?" And maybe the woman will feel uh, 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 less guarded. Yeah, to, to share things. Yes, to share things with me, you know, and then that is one way to kind of get a. A, a look into somebody's character. Uh, even I would say, if you are, if you are with a woman, and you all are in a room, and she speaks tree, and everybody in the room is speaking tree, and she doesn't take time to include you in the conversation, that's a red flag because she wants to keep you on a. She, she wants to keep you ignorant. Yeah. You, know, you 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 really need to you would like to speak and interact and those things, but if a person really loves you and wants you to be a part, they'll also actively help to make you part. 
you know exactly so it, it, i would it, say the same thing with a man yes you know and yeah. that if you know i've been with women that wanted me to uh, learn their language you know be it what it whatever and they would actively be trying to bring me you know and i'm and bring me into it you know and and those things also begin to help you to endear yourself to that person like that person really wants they really me to be part yeah they yeah. really uh sincerely want me to be a part and those are some of the characteristics that i kind of saw you know something i saw in my wife too you know i'm a pan-african and i was raised in a particular way and uh when my wife began when we uh, she worked at the radio station as a uh, had her own show and that sort of thing so she was a let, let's say she was a person that questioned and she liked and in my opinion she was thinking so she began that one of the first questions i recall her asking me was you know uh why does she have the name jeanette and not Maunya, you know, though both of her names, the why, how did she wind up, how did she, an African from the Volta region, wind up with the name Jeanette, Jeanette? Uh -huh. Before, you know, I, I tried to explain the best I could, you know, how we also wound up with the names Johnson and, you know, Fuddrucker, you know, so, you right. know, and it, it kind of, they kind of correlate, but, you know, just the simple fact that she was, you know, uh, had the, the, the questioning mind meaning that she wanted to know more. Yeah, you know, that, that, those things made me also more interested in her, you know, and uh, I tried to push books on her and that sort of thing. And it's, you know, not everybody's like that, you know what I'm saying? And then how I began to, uh, when I met her, uh, and I'm sure this is quite common. Her screensaver on her phone was a picture of uh, the Antichrist. <laughs> she had a picture of the Antichrist on her phone, on her uh, on, on as a screensaver. So well, you know, one day I picked up her phone. I was like, "Who is that?" You know, and it was the white Jesus. And I was like, oh, "I was like, oh, you know." Before I'm sorry. it's breaking up, I did It was breaking up. I didn't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. I said she had a screensaver on her phone. That was a picture of the uh, European Jesus, oh. and I, you know, and you know, I picked the phone. I was like, "Well, who is that?" You know, and that began kind of the dialogue. And then, you know, I what I began to do is play lectures around. You know, I, if she was coming over to my place, I would have the lecture playing in the background. You know, yeah. and sometimes, you know, a person, you know, a thinking person will hear. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Hello? Oh, okay. All right, we're back. I'm sorry. You're back. We're back. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What was I saying? I forgot what I was saying. You were saying, uh, we were uh, talking uh, about, um, you were saying that when initially she had the white Jesus on her screensaver. Yes. And um, you began to start playing um, lectures in the background when she would come over. So a thinking person yeah. would um, hear or yeah, someone who's paying attention would hear. Yeah. And that's where we were. Yeah, you know, and at, at that time too, that was, let's say like, 2012, we had also started to form a, a African history study group, and I would invite her to these things to come around, and you know we begin to, you know, evolve, and her thinking also begin to evolve, you know, and and begin to, you know, uh, I don't know how to express it, but you know it it built it built a better bond between us, you know that yeah. way you know uh, I can also share different things that I had in my mind with her and also get feedback from her. 
as well, she also began to open me up into uh, the cultural things here in Ghana, you know, that I wasn't familiar with. And, you know, it really, it really helped me to go a long way uh, in, my, in my transition and acclimation here, you know. Uh, so trying to find a mate here, the, the obstacles and challenges of, of Black men here, uh, African diaspora, I would say just to take your time. One thing I find that brothers come here and uh, when, when other African-American men come to uh, visit me, I feel like I'm under a microscope, <laughs> especially my relationship with my wife. You know, they are, I, I would say they are curious yeah. to know why her, why did I choose her or what made me decide to settle, you know, when I could, didn't have to. You know, clearly I didn't have to settle, but uh, I chose to. The line then, is breaking up really bad right oh. now. Hold on, let me see. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I look like I was the one okay. having the problems there. Mm. Yeah, so uh, what oh, was so I saying? basically, the what we were saying, <laughs> you were saying that what I heard you say were was, you know, like these um, types of um, questions and you know back and forth. It helped to build that bond with you and your wife. Yeah, um, showing you know basically bringing you all closer together. You know, yes. and. Um, I think that that's important, you know, in any relationship, but it's even more essential in these relationships because we're coming from different cultures and um, it's just so much to learn. And I don't think even in a lifetime we could learn everything. Um, mm -hmm. So our, um, our significant others are playing we are playing a huge role in each other's lives as far as, you know, those acclamations. Um, one thing I wanted to ask you before I, before I, we go is that there's this common theme that I hear with women who are getting married to or have married Ghanaian men. Um, and it seems as though like um, people feel like we don't have a culture or we don't have, um, I guess we don't have something to hold on to, <laughs> and which is something that I uh, vehemently disagree with. Um, yeah, I think that we have a very strong culture and Ghanaians have a very strong culture and we're bringing these two cultures together. And mm -hmm. in bringing these two cultures together, um, we, can learn so much from each other, right? And we should be learning so much from each other. Um, I think a lot of women make the mistake of um, not uh, choosing a mate who is just as uh, interested in their culture or her culture as she is in his. And mm -hmm. I think eventually those those things will cause a lot of trouble because if you don't understand my culture and I don't under and I'm only understanding your culture then it's a one-sided situation and one-sided mm -hmm. situations tend to lead to disaster, right? Correct. Well, let me let me quickly interject here. This is something I recently learned that about uh, Ghanaian men and their perception of African American women. And that is that uh, they're interested in a big dick, and that's it. That is that that is uh, recently something that information that came down to me, and I was like, "Oh, well, I you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna have to reluctantly agree mm. because so often, which is I, I literally just was talking with my mom about." how angry it makes me that the women from here tend to fetishize the men. And um, it's been the kind of stuff I hear 
I don't know why people think they should tell me the stuff, but the kind of stuff, and I'm sure you get a lot of it too. But um, on one of these, on one of these uh, episodes of this series of um, videos on relationships, I do want us to kind of delve into the topic of sex tourism. Um, and how that has traditionally been a white people thing, but yeah. it seems like we, we, we imitate. We, we almost imitate everything the they do, and, um, and we imitate everything I they do. I absolutely hate it. I hate yeah. it. I hate it. I hate it. And um, I probably will hate it forever. Uh, have you? How do you feel, or what do you think about that topic as far as us? We're doing all of this repatriation and, you know, that part of it. Okay, well, you know, sex tour, I first was introduced to sex tourism uh, online. And I, you know, I didn't know what it, I didn't know, it, not just online, but I knew about sex tourism from the European or um, white American perspective. And that was like pedophilia. And even they would go around, to these Asian or Filipino or Thailand and, you know, be predatory on children. Even right. I think something, something like this came about in the, in the Gambia as well. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, these, uh, uh, now I'm hearing African-American men kind of talk about, and I'm, I've come across some of these groups, these brothers are going to Colombia, Brazil and whatnot. And then, you know, typically they are looking for the hybrid African phenotype yep. and to each his own, you know, uh, if that's what you like, whatever, you know, it's a very dangerous game to play with your life, you know, yep. uh, going around like that. Uh, granted, um, we can't, how can it be regulated or can it ever be regulated? I don't think so. No. Uh, you know, you never, you could never really know what's in somebody's mind or heart in terms right. of what they want. And I, I've come across some videos where I remember some white man, that came, a white or Arab man that came to Kenya and he claimed to have videoed himself with so many Kenyan women. You know, yeah. uh, I, this video was trending about two years ago and, you know, he, he took a lot of flack for that, but, you know, it's, it's, it's not a one way street. People also right. claim both sides. And, you know, I don't agree with sex tourism in that sense as, as being a draw, but I'm also know the dynamics of the African American experience in terms mm -hmm. of marriage and relationships there and how, uh, and, and too, unfortunately, I should say, unfortunately is too common for uh, failed marriages and uh, uh, people not finding love, you know? Yeah. And I think if we can draw uh, our men, African-American men and women into a, a more healthier relationship in Africa, I'm 100% I'm for that. Uh, yeah. It's not about sex tourism. It's about maybe trying to uh, rebuild a family. And I, yes. I, 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 I better, I like to better frame it in that kind of way. Now you have others that will kind of call moving to Africa and uh, uh, instead of calling it sex tourism, they would call it in Africa, you know, every day, especially if you, you got it popping and you're young, you know, you can, you can change women by the, by the week, you know, right. that's what you say choose. Right. If that's what you still choose. You know, when I, I in my experience, I found that to kind of be, you know, at some point it becomes redundant. You know, yeah. uh, you want I, I wanted something more. I wanted something more personally. Yeah. And I think that most human beings at some stage want to have something more than just uh, uh, sex, you know, mm -hmm. uh, or sex with somebody different. So, you know, but in, in, my, in my take on it, I think sex tourism is a bad thing. That's the negative side of it. Uh, right. The positive side is that uh, repatriation on, on based in romance and love is a good thing. 
Yeah, Lord, I love you it. know, I love it. When, when you mentioned um, that African-American, the, 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 I guess the stigma, st stigma is that we're mm -hmm. just looking for <laughs> a big dick. Big dick. Um, the reason why I tend to um, reluctantly agree with that is because I see so many women get into relationships with men that I know for sure if those men were in America, they would not date them. And they I'm like, not. absolutely not. Why would you go and get, there's only, I mean, you just have to come to the conclusion that that's the only reason that you're dating these men is because mm -hmm. you're, in essence, paying for some for a big dick. Yes, for a big and, dick. I mean, we just have to keep it real. You got to keep it real because it, it's, mm. it's around all of the coast and and in the Caribbean. Um, no matter what continent you're on, uh, there's there's men and women who travel most. Most of the time, they're traveling to the coastal regions, and they find these poor people who, oh, 100 CDs is a lot of money, or 500 CDs is a lot of money to them, but it's like $80 to me, and, you know, why not? But it's frustrating for me because, yes. you know, I'm married to a Ghanaian man, and... I have Ghanaian, you know, little brothers and cousins and stuff like that. And I'm like, I don't want anybody looking at them like, oh, all I'm trying to do is see what's under his pants. Um, it's, it's, God, it's just something that really just bothers me because at the end of the day, you know, people do this, have done the same thing to black men in America. And I kind of liken it to, um, I'm from South Florida, so at one point there was it was the Jamaican man. Everybody wanted a Jamaican man, and everybody was trying to get the Jamaican man because they know how to dance, and so they must know how to screw. Um, yes, and that was a thing for a while. How, then, how Stella got a group? Yes. Exactly, and then it was once that kind of died down, and people just realized, well, these are just men. They're men, and you're going to get some good ones, and you're going to get some bad ones. Um, you're going to get some, mm -hmm. some of everything mm -hmm. in that. Then it moved to the Haitian men, and Haitian men were all the rage. Right. Everybody wanted them a zoo. And it's like, okay, cool. That died down somewhat. It's still kind of a thing, but it pretty much has died down. Now, it's like everybody and their mama looking for an African man because an African man is going to... They're looking yeah. for them an African man bingo. <laughs> and Essentially, it's like, yes. Come mm. on, y'all. Like, you it's, can't... It should be more just, substance to it. You can't do that. And it, to me, it feels like the same way that white women fetishize black men um, here in America. Like, everybody won't uh African American man, not because they're good men, but yeah. because they can fuck. Yes, Come that's on. about it. Because they can got a big dick. Come on, nah. like mm -hmm. then you don't uh, you don't minimize people, especially your own people. Like to minimize our people to sexual organs is just it's frustrating for me. It's really frustrating, mm -hmm. but. It's true. I, I find it to be um, it's true. Pr pretty true. Um, just from what I what I see, the things I see women say, the things I um, hear women say about um, these African men, um, it just tends to be one of the things I guess they look forward to. And then in Ghanaian men, <laughs> um, you know the the build they they've done. A pretty good job of mixing like let's say a shanty man and northerner men so now you got a shanty man who are taller and more muscular and they have 
a nice big tool. And I'm like, look, if you go in the gun, I'm looking for a fine man. You're going to find, like you said, you're going to find a beautiful one, a more beautiful woman around every corner. If you go looking for a fine man, you're going to find one everywhere you look. Mm. Like, it has to be more to it than him just being fine. Is yeah. he is he a fine man who looking for a sponsor? And if yes. that's what you want to do, if you want to sponsor a man, fine. That's then, then do you do you then do exactly. you exactly yes but don't be mad you. don't yes. be mad when you get what you ask for yes you swallow the whole hook you swallow you the whole hook, the whole hook. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know um you know. but it's that's that's a really interesting topic that i i really um i plan to dive into even more um because with the whole me, year of return thing, um, a lot came with that. Yes, if if a I lot. could come in for just one 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 brief distance, uh, with our background checks with the repatriation services, right? Uh, my initial mind on it was that you know we would be helping vet helping serious relationships to come together. Uh -huh. Right in a kind of uh, traditional setting where, you know, as a woman marrying a Ghanaian man, the man is to come to your house, ask the permission of your head of your house, yada yada yada, and it's right. a very traditional, tra very traditional scripted thing, you know, where you can ask questions and vet. You know, the phone calls and the people that have been contacting me for the background checks, they want to check up on somebody they met two months ago. You know, and uh, and they came. I came. I came to Ghana in January, and I met this brother, and you know, and we spent some time together. And I came back, and this time we was intimate. And you know, I'm planning to come back again. I just want to know if he, if 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 it's just him and me. I'm like, <laughs> first, you know, I begin to ask questions about, you know, I can extract some of the seriousness of your relationship. First of all, right. if there's if there's a twenty year difference between you and your the man, that's a red flag right there for me. Right there. And I'll say, well, and I'm like, well, okay, uh, well, how, <laughs> you know, without trying to discourage them in their relationship, you know, I, I'm also doing the background check. I'm not trying to put myself or my people in danger. You right. know, uh, if the person is running the scam on you and doing that sort of thing, he's He's like, but he's likely to become violent if you are, if I'm coming to end his business with you. Right. Um, so uh, I, if I'm to do that, if I choose, and I don't normally choose to do, go into those type of relationships, involve myself in that type of dynamic, you know, right. that's not, that's really not in the spirit of what we created the service for. Right. So uh, if you want me to, take that if you insist on me to take that on take that on then the how i'm coming to charge you for that is quite different than yeah you know and i think you know i had one recently one sister she <laughs> when i came out to charge her, i was like oh well fine you know yada 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 uh you let me i'm gonna charge you this do you mean cds I was like, oh, my sister, <laughs> I don't think it's possible to uh, execute that information and extract that information for you for that amount of in CDs that, that right. what it will cost, what it's going to cost in transport and food and uh, lodging alone to uh, it, get that information that you want about somebody whose house you've never been to. Right. It's going to take some time and uh, and a lot of effort. And a lot, and the end on top of that, trusted people and mm -hmm. a trusted network of people. That's not somebody, you know, I have to rely on people that are going to go to that particular surveillance that person without engaging them and yeah. letting them know, hey, man, uh, such and such is looking at you and what and what, you know, you better right. watch your, you know what I'm saying? So right. then when a person starts to ask for frivolous background checks, 
you know, I, I'm not a, I'm not a private investigator. Right. And I, I'm not, I, I'm not coming to put my people in that type of uh, danger over right. somebody that you're not even serious about, you know? Right. So, you know, I, I try to encourage those that are, are really looking to take their relationship to the next level. And I don't mean the next level of sex. Right. I mean the next level, of, which is marriage, marriage. You know, and that sort of thing. Now, now before I know how to handle that, you know, I can handle following somebody too, but it's better. I feel better about it. The person will feel better about it. And you will feel better about the process other than trying to sneak around and trying to get some information. And then what, then, you know, I know the person got, it. I know he have a girlfriend. Well, if you know that, then what are we talking about? <laughs> if you know you that, mean? then what are we talking about? Speaking of, yes. um, speaking of, before I let you go, um, I want, I, I just thought of this and I wanted to know, what would you suggest for women and men who are looking to marry Ghanaians? And, you know, we have processes. You have a knocking process. You have this and that and the third that you, it's a whole gamut of things that supposed to be traditionally done. But if, of course, we don't have like family there. Most people don't have a mother and father there. Um, mm -hmm. How do you, how would you suggest getting, you know, making okay. sure that okay. well, they're this doing, is kind I of... guess, the right thing? I don't know. Well, this is pretty much with the service that we also providing, and then that is, okay. Let's say, let's use you, your, yourself an example. You, you, you want to marry this brother. This brother wants to marry you. Uh, you don't have those things here that you just expressed. That is a house, family here. Well, if you come to me and you say, "Oh yeah, Yazi, I want you to. I want to take your service. I want to help to vet this vet this brother." Fine. Mm -hmm. Let's do a traditional ceremony right here, born again Africa, right in my garden, beautiful place. I will arrange for elders. I'll use my wife's family or I'll use elders from my community. And I'll also include African American elders. And we will come around in the support of you, our sister, to make sure that we are able to vet the person so that if you need to have a list. Maybe you and I will sit down together and say, well, let's create a marriage mm -hmm. list. Uh, and it shouldn't be nothing extravagant. You don't have to, person ain't got to buy you land and the iPhone 90. No, you know, something reflective of what is right. common, you know, and that, you know, when I got out, when I married my wife, I think maybe I spent a less than thousand dollars acquiring the things for my the lid, not even close to thousand. Right. So you know those things that you you know it's just really customary that you compensate mm -hmm. the parents, you compensate the siblings, and those kind of things that kind of give the uh, traditional thing its 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 respect due, and that yeah. you know, and I think once we uh, uh, have those things in place, uh, that can help. Uh, sisters in selecting a proper mate or vetting mm -hmm. a proper mate, you know, because we don't have a tight knit community, like you know, mm -hmm. the, like Yefa Ujamu Fihanka was supposed to, is supposed to be, and that right. would be, let's say, a, a, a vi our village, if you will. And uh -huh. you know, now the man wants to marry you. Where is your village? Oh, my village is at Yefa Ujamu Fihanka. Uh, we yeah. have a list. We already have yeah. a list. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the chief or the whoever is going to act as my uh, head of house. So right. you want to marry me, you go and see that, you go to that place. I'll direct right. you there. I'll be there when you get there. The man, the, uh -huh. the, that presumed person already knows the what is what's going to happen there. You know, yeah. and it's okay to compensate that person. That's why I even created the service because it's a need. Is yeah, I use the it is. There should be a demand of it. So you are going into the marriage as an African diasporan, African American, totally ignorant of the traditional side of it. So a Ghanaian man doesn't just 
marry a woman he met online like that, he has to go to meet the family. The woman's family has to meet his family and he have to have, you know, and the family will be held responsible for uh, the man's bad behavior. Yeah. You know, you know, if you not, if I'm not behaving well for our marriage, you, my wife can call my mother, right. call my father. And right. they will then come to me, hey man, why, what is, you know, what's going on between you and your, you know, da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for us, our experience is I don't want nobody in my business. Exactly. You know, don't want and that is that, how is that, what is the result of that? A bunch of divorces and, and non unmarried people and uh, yeah. no birth, you know, that, that has yeah. been the result. So we have to be, begin to reevaluate how we choose and select our mate and go through that vetting process. So yeah, you know, you're absolutely right. Uh, this is why we try to, cre I, I, I'm creating this type of service. You know, only that I think, you know, people are not running to it. Yeah. You say people are not running to the service because a lot of us are coming in, we want to be hidden. You know, we want to do yes. our thing. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. then when, you know, once, when, then when the shit hits the fan, oh, you know. Oh, can you help me, can you help me? <laughs> how do I get a divorce? I didn't yeah. even know he was married. I don't know. Exactly. I'm like, well, you hustling backwards. You know, you should exactly. have uh, engaged, engaged the community here. You know, use the resources that are here in the ground that could have assisted you. You know, and uh, um, what we are doing and the services we are charging for, we are not trying to uh, stop you. Right. <laughs> we want to, I, I'm an advocate of these type of marriages and, and those type of things. Though, my experience and time and energy has a value. Absolutely. So as I begin, as I begin to engage myself, and also I want to see you and your, and your mate have a successful marriage and repatriation. It serves as a beacon light yeah. to everybody else that you can have it too. And that's yeah. essentially what we are also uh, what we are about at our business here. Yeah, so tell everybody how they can get in contact with you, how they can get your service, like how do how do we how do we hook it up? Well, thank you for asking. Uh, you can reach us on you can reach me at my phone number 024-756-0016 on WhatsApp. Uh, you can also reach me on our Facebook platforms. Uh, one is Real Repatriation Consultation. Another is Born Again African Ghana Soul Food. Another is Born Again African at a Born Again African Boutique. We also have the Born Again African Study Group. And we also on Born Again African Instagram. So we also on Google. So you can reach out to us if you just want to come in and have lunch or you want to go into the real repatriation services. Uh, I charge $25 for an hour consultation. Uh, we schedule a consultation, I discuss it with you. Uh, we are now expanding our businesses, our, some of the services that we have and we're introducing, as you said, uh, African American women kind of fetishize African men for having big dicks. Uh, I think African women, they're not fetishized, but big booties are very common in, in Africa. We had recently uh, introduced a, 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 a little known secret in Africa, and that is that there's a cream that, young, that women use to help them change, uh, be, how should I say it? Big booty cream. <laughs> there's a big booty big cream, booty cream. <laughs> <laughs> as well as there's uh bitters that men use to help their erection mm. and, uh, and help the impotency yeah. and so you know these are very common things all the way medicines all the way down to boils on Absolutely. skin you know one thing I, I was talking to a friend of mine about was that many of the products that we get have access to in the united states most of them are tested and created for European skin and phenotypes. Uh, what's amazing about the products that are made in Africa, they all the test subjects are African. Now, all the creams and things that are used are used on melanated skin. And it, we instantly have a different reaction to them. So, yeah. you know, uh, Africa has been painted in such a terrible light that they've forgotten that this is the, 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 where civilization began. Not just where civilization, but where where medicine also had its beginning in African spirituality. And these things, these two are, are, are married together, married yeah. together, medicine and African, traditional African spirituality. So uh, those that 
can't give birth, you'd be surprised. There's a medicine here to help you give birth. So yeah. this is another aspect that we are trying to, that now we are trying, that we are introducing through our platforms that people can have access to. Because if you're not on the ground at the grassroots level, you don't hear these things. Absolutely. You don't know that there's a medicine for that. But like yourself, as I was calling the things out, you are nodding your head like, yeah, that's that's just common knowledge. You know, there's yeah. a cream for that. There's a this for that. You know, and then, you know, and, uh, and sometimes we question our own uh, uh, ingenuity and our own genius. And uh, yeah. we need not do that. We should begin to embrace the things that we create for us by us. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. If you haven't already, hit the like button. And we will see you again. Thank you so much, Yazid you, Muhammad of Born Again uh, Africa Real Repatriation Consulta Consultations. It has been a pleasure, as it always is, to talk to you. And I will see you soon. All right, sister. Peace. Please greet your family for me. Thank you. I Have will. a nice evening. You too. Right. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Also, stay tuned for more from our series, Finding Love in Ghana. This has been Breaking the Chains. We'll see you soon.